All right. I've told you cash flows is a fun week. We're going to have a good time. One of the ways we're going to have a good time is because of the special guests that I brought in today. This is a little bit different than some of our other guests. A lot of our other guests have a huge accounting background. Jessica does not. Jessica is an entrepreneur. Welcome. Thank you, Ken. How are you? I'm great. Good. Hey, you have this business. This is Jessica Dolan, by the way. You have this business called Room to Breathe. Yes, Tell the students a little bit about what it is that you do. As an entrepreneur, what do you do? What do you offer your clients? I offer life simplifying. So I work with clients to help them declutter their homes or their offices, set up organizing systems so the clutter doesn't come back, mm. and you maintain an organized life, which in turn allows you to live the kind of life you want. You have time to do the things you want. The flip side of my business is staging. So I'm helping people simplify the home selling process and helping them prepare their homes to sell quickly and at top dollar and hopefully with a little less stress. Well, I think you're right. I think, you know, if we could all figure out because we are, instead of putting things away, Americans have a habit of putting it down. Yep. And then we <laughs> never come back to putting it away. And then we never can find it. We never have a clue where it is. And we're scrambling at the last minute. Oh, tax season is wonderful for a lot of people because they have no clue where these records are that they've right. collected for years. And now they're trying to get it all put together and they just don't do it. And it's the same way in the business world too. And you miss, with taxes, a lot of people miss really important deductions, deductions. for things that's they can't right. find. And it takes just as long to put something in the wrong spot as it does the right spot. And that's the key. So. And I think that's the, the issue is that, you know, um, one, of the, one of the great gurus that I've listened to over the time said, never handle a piece of paper more than once. Mm -hmm. It's a and good goal. And we oftentimes just put it down. I'll get to it later. And then it piles up. And, <laughs> oh my gosh, what am I going to do with that? So I have this maybe vital piece of information. Now I don't know anywhere. It's somewhere mm -hmm. in this stack, but now I got to flip through it. And the time waste and the and the frustration and the stress. It's, so you really help yes. by simplifying lives. Yes. You de-stress people's lives too. Yes. And stress is an issue that stress is good in in the right quantities <laughs> for the yes, right reasons. Yes, in the right doses it is, but right. but. We take it to extremes. Undue stress is not good. No, it's for anybody. Not. And so, you try to help people with that. I do. Yeah. I do. So, do you have any fun stories that you can oh, share gosh. about? Oh gosh, I have all sorts of stories. Do Everyone you? says I should write a book because of all the things I've found or seen or heard. Or some are not appropriate for video. <laughs> some. <laughs> um, maybe one that relates to this would be um, last March. I had an email from a past client who. I hadn't worked with her for a year, but she called just, or she, I'm sorry, she emailed just to say thank you because tax time had taken her only three hours when in all the prior years, it had taken her almost two weeks to get ready. Wow. And she said she just, her and her husband owed me a huge amount of thanks for that. Just so think, it was kind of neat. Just think of the dollar value you mm -hmm. could put on that. Three hours versus a couple weeks. Oh, yeah. You know, you know it's, it's immeasurable in many ways. And we make some such short-sighted decisions sometimes because some people might say, oh, I'm not hiring somebody that does this organizing because they're going to expect me to pay them. Right. Where in, in, in actuality, if you do your job, you're going to have the effects like, like with those clients. Long term. Yeah. That money that they pay me will be, Kittens. I mean, right. tenfold. That's right. That, and, that's, so. and that's a good number to figure out. And that's, good. that's a good rate of return. That is you know, a pretty good rate of return. That's a pretty good rate of return. <laughs> Any investment that's returning 10 times what you put into it is probably something you should consider. Yes. That's right. Definitely. And especially when you, you know, when you have the intangibles like the de-stress and that kind of stuff. But, so we can get into other stories too, but I, I do want to talk cash flow for a minute because as an entrepreneur, cash flow is probably pretty important to you. Yes. Very important. Yeah. Um, I'm a single younger female. <laughs> Not so much anymore, but um, it, yeah, when you don't have extra income coming in from other ways, you really have to maintain that and watch it. And, and it gets tight sometimes, I'm sure. Oh, it definitely does. It definitely does. You're dealing with receivables, like we've been talking yes. to the students how, how, how we actually calculate the cash flows. And part of the cash flows is, all right, so because you've earned this money, mm -hmm. doesn't necessarily mean that they've paid you yet. Right. And so you've got to make sure that you um, have that relationship with your clients that you keep on them so that they continue to send those checks. And, <laughs> and my business is a little bit different because I do collect, I would say nine times out of 10, I'm collecting payment at the end of a session. So, but I do have a small amount that I am billing out mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. yes, I, it's really important <laughs> to stay on top of. Yeah. Cause you've got bills to pay. 
I've got, yeah. You got employees to pay? Yes. Um, if you look to expand, right. you might have to have space that you look at and you got to be able to pay for that, whether that's something that you buy or something that you lease. And so um, your vehicle, because you've got to get from place to place. Mm -hmm. Well, vehicles aren't free. No, I wish they were though. Yeah, wouldn't it be nice? <laughs> you know, if we could get Cata to just take that bus from <laughs> yeah. just call to get, have them pick you up at your oh, house. I could put so much stuff in a Cata bus. <laughs> just think of what you could do with <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah, but it's not. And so all these costs that are associated, they're vital for the kind mm -hmm. of business that you do. Yes. So, do you have any cash flow issues or stories that you've dealt with that that would help us better understand how entrepreneurs really think about this from that cash flow perspective? I would like to be a little more in tune with that actually, if I'm being honest. Mm -hmm. um, I do keep track of it now and I, I look at it and I have a bookkeeper that works mm -hmm. with me to educate me even more than, than what I am right now. Um, it's mostly when you're a small entrepreneur, having enough to do some of those bigger things mm -hmm. is really difficult, um, especially when you're just starting mm -hmm. starting up. I've I will hit seven years in October that I've been in business, and I would say it's only been the last year or two that I can start really planning for big future things. Mm -hmm. um, and knowing the cash that's coming in, I you know I commit to socking away a portion of that every month right off the top before I even before it even hits the account. <laughs> Basically, it's it's gone. Um, I'm trying to think if I have any. Well, let's. You, you brought up a, you brought up at least three points there. Okay. The first is a bookkeeper. Now, the bookkeeper is vital. Now, most of oh, these yes. students will never actually do. I've never done a journal entry in my life. Most of them will never either. But they have to have this basic understanding of accounting, which you did. I mean, you're not an yes. accountant in any way, shape, or no. form. No. <laughs> nope. <laughs> but you have to have a basic understanding in accounting. So one, right. you can keep your bookkeeper straight and make sure that they're not skimming off the tops. Exactly. We lost a business in town because the uh, um, it was one of the big car dealers. The family lost oh, the, yeah. remember that one? Mm -hmm. Family lost it because the bookkeeper was keeping a little bit on the side. You know, like you're saying, mm -hmm. putting a little, so, so was the bookkeeper for this business. Uh, ran off to Buenos Aires, I think it was, with uh, $3 million. Holy cow. <laughs> yeah, and the family lost the business. So I think that's an example as an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. You have to understand that bookkeeping piece. Yes, you do. You know? Because I do catch, I mean, I trust my bookkeeper with Absolutely. my life, but, I do kind of scroll through what she does, mm -hmm. and there are some things that if I didn't know what I know, I would never catch. Right. That's exactly right. So, so this basis and, the, and understanding of accounting mm -hmm. helps you run your business yes. and keep it from having problems. Let's just put it that way. And we do, I do journal entries in a sense, sure. you know, using mm -hmm. QuickBooks, you are, it's not on paper and, no. and ledger paper, but it's, you know, in the computer and, and you do same, Electronic. same terminology. and. That's right. And so as, as an entrepreneur, you're using a, a software package yes. that allows you to do that even though you have a bookkeeper. Right. So, you know, there is this relationship that has to form for our entrepreneurial people. The other thing that you mentioned about the bookkeeper, though, is, is vital. And that's that when you have a person, it shouldn't just be you telling the bookkeeper what to do. It should be the bookkeeper mm -hmm. helping you understand what you could do that much better. Absolutely. You know, that advice. I trust her to do that. Right. And if <laughs> yes. you didn't, you'd get somebody else. Right. And that's the key. It's okay to make those changes if you're not getting the service that you need from these people. Yes. Because, and having that basic understanding again is vital. Two, the next thing you talked about was growth and the need to grow mm -hmm. and to be looking at growth. And a lot, I think a lot of people make the assumption that when you say, I'm a small business owner, oh, she's rich. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. <laughs> Be nice. But you're it? right. People do make that. They do make that assumption. Or that you can take vacations whenever you want. Whatever you want. You just yeah. plan your mm -hmm. schedule around your own time. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Couldn't be farther from the truth. <laughs> but then let's get into it. Why are you an entrepreneur? We'll get into that in a little okay. bit. But I think the piece that we're talking about here is that what I think we have to recognize is seven years. And now only in the last year are you starting to get, hey, this is, I'm starting to make some headway. Mm -hmm. I've got some clients and mm -hmm. I'm making some you know, moves within the marketplace and stuff. And I am able to start thinking about growth. And I did that from day one. Yes. Yeah. All right. Oh yeah. I've had big goals since before I started the business, mm -hmm. but now I get to watch them start to come to, to fruition. Blossom. Yes. That's right. Yeah. 
But one of the things that you said that you've been doing, which is cash flow related again, and that is not spending everything you get. Oh, yeah. No. Putting mm -hmm. something away so that you have that because there's going to be rainy days out there. Mm -hmm. I'm sure in the last seven years you've had a few rainy days. Yeah. You have some, some... moments where you're not sure you're going to go to the grocery store that <laughs> month. Right. or Yeah. You absolutely do. That's right. And so it takes some time to build that and you got to... So it must come into... Let's go that question I want to ask then. Why? Why would you do all this? Why do you deal with accounting and do QuickBooks and all that and, <laughs> and, and worry about growth and, and seven years to get to this point where I'm now feeling a little less pressure and stress because the business is starting to take off and having to put some money away, not get to spend it all. Why would you want to do that? Well, I think when you find something that you really like to do, that you're passionate mm -hmm. about, you're willing to do some of those other things to do what you love mm -hmm. and it doesn't feel like work. So yes, I work, you know, 40 to 70 hours a week and get paid very little. It still doesn't feel like work because when I'm with clients, it's fun and something I enjoy. And you do have that flip side of, yeah, I could take vacation mm -hmm. whenever I wanted, mm -hmm. which is nice. Mm -hmm. um, and for me personally, I have a little bit of a problem with authority. So it's better for me to kind of be in charge and do what I want to do when I want to do it. Um, I like being the boss too. Yeah. I really I'm do. working on the control factor, but um, you take all that into consideration and that's sort of what makes, I think, a successful entrepreneur is, is somebody who does find something they really love mm -hmm. and enjoy and are willing to work hard at it and educate themselves on the other aspects of business because it's not just about what you're passionate about. Mm -hmm. You have to know about accounting and you have to know a little bit about marketing and sales and networking and all those other facets those of business. Mm -hmm. So if you don't know those things, then you're probably not going to last long, I would venture to guess. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you brought up a good point that's a great segue into the thing, next thing I wanted to talk about and that is you have this thing called EWE, mm -hmm. which is an educational opportunity mm -hmm. for women. Because I think a lot of people believe that, you know, this good old boys network, we it's it was in <laughs> our blood and the guys to go out there and run yep. those businesses and be the boss and and we just naturally know how to do it. And it's not true. But Oh I know. <laughs> <laughs> but um, women are have the, a lot of women have this belief that that's true. Mm-hmm. And they don't know where to turn to get another woman's perspective in the work world. Tell us about this EWE a little bit. Well, EWE stands for Entrepreneurial Women's Expo. And it came about, again, because I know the way I am. I tend to be a little bit more of a wallflower. I don't like big social networking events. I feel very intimidated by large groups of people and people I don't know. So this event came about because of the way I am in the business world. And I really wanted to do a day where women could come to a very comfortable setting mm -hmm. where laughter and fun is sort of mm -hmm. the, the predominant factor. With, Which is why you have Chris Hanahan, I guess. Yes. We have lots of... <laughs> yeah, mutual friend. <laughs> yeah. Lots of funny women. And, you know, I'm all about sarcasm and sense of humor. And, and I encourage that this day. An element of it, though, is also education, mm -hmm. you know, with educational workshops. And it's important to me to draw all these women in to connect more on a personal level first so that then business relationships can form from that. And I encourage high school and college girls to come to this day because I want them to see a room full of very successful, successful women, women in business mm -hmm. and know that they can do these things, that you don't have to be that you can step into, I guess, a, a male-dominated world. Mm -hmm. Not as male-dominated anymore. It's but, not. Um, I tell you, when you look in, if you were to come into my class, the actual classroom, and you look at the faces in that classroom, mm -hmm. about half or more are female. It's the fastest growing business segment right now. It is. Mm -hmm. And it's been that way for a couple of years now. Yeah. So having these opportunities should give women the confidence and the understanding that there are things that they can do specifically to help yeah. improve their chances of being successful and maybe coming to EWE is one mm -hmm. of those things. If they want to do that, what would they do? They could go to www.ewesc.com and register online or even just get information. We also have a Facebook page where we share all sorts of articles and tips and ideas from 
presenting to accounting to networking, you name it, it's there. Um, I was thinking of cash flow with that though too. Yeah, I mean, right. anybody that takes on a big event, as you know, it's very <laughs> expensive. It's hugely expensive. Just and having the place to do it and then the food or the snacks yes. and the drinks and, and all that that goes with it and then uh, taking care of uh, speakers that you bring in and their fees or, mm -hmm. or, their, or their just their trip travel expenses or whatever it is, it's hugely expensive. I would say with EWA, I definitely put my accounting skills to, to test yeah. there. Um, more so, maybe I'm complacent in my business aspect of that. <laughs> well, right you have now. a good bookkeeper, so that helps. Yes, but, yeah. but with EWA, definitely I, I realized, wow, I'm really... I'm really using those things that I had learned many, many years, many, ago, many years ago, and I'm thankful for that. Because you were just one of these students sitting in that I chair, was. why am I taking accounting, right? And it, yes. yes, we'll leave it at that, yes. We'll leave it at that. <laughs> and now look at you. Yeah. Successful entrepreneur. Yeah, I feel pretty good. You know, well-known in the community. You have this other, come on, <laughs> she's humble too. Um, you have this other operation, the EWE, that you're highly involved with mm -hmm. and doing all those kind of things, helping other women be that much more successful. So you're a great role model. Oh, thank you, Ken. And I really I feel appreciate the same way about you. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> but I really appreciate you making the time for us today because I think it's really helpful for, for people. And guys, the, one of the things you have to understand is you think you have the inroad because you're a guy. Guess what? <laughs> That's changing changing significantly. If you don't think you're competing against the females in a classroom, you're wrong. And a lot of them are kicking your butt. So, and it's people like this that have that drive, have that passion for what they do, that are gonna run the world. Hopefully, <laughs> for the better. <laughs> I like yeah. that confidence, yeah. that's yes. great. Yeah. So, any other last words of advice for our fair students? <laughs> Pay attention. Um, you may not know now how you're going to need these things, but I can assure you, you will need them at some point three years five years 15 years you It'll never happen. know and all of a sudden you'll go oh i remember learning that so i just say pay attention i wish that i had paid better, better attention, attention. <laughs> and tried harder so yeah. if i had one thing to do over that would be it and that's one of the things i ask so thank you for that sure because it helps them i mean i get paid <laughs> either way you know but for them I, we really do want them to be successful bottom line well, it's hard when you're in the moment too. You you don't you don't know what you'll need. That's so, exactly right. But you will need it. Thanks, Thanks Jess. Ken. Have a great day. You too.